And joining me in the studio now is Murray Dundas, our environment editor. Murray, what evidence is there linking heat waves like this one to climate change? I think the safest answer is to look towards the data because that's certainly demonstrating that heat waves are on the rise in recent decades. And in fact, a statement from scientists from the renowned Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research said that yes, we can link the current heat waves to climate change simply by looking at data over the last 500 years, which is why they did what they did. The results speak for themselves. The hottest summers in Europe since 1500 AD have all occurred in this century, 2002, 2003, as we just saw in the report, 2010, 16, 18, and potentially 2019 if we continue at the current rate. And Annette, it feels like we're always talking about records, and that's because we keep on setting them. And in fact, global heat records are being set five times as often today as they would be in a stable climate. This is exactly what the climate scientists have been warning us of for for decades now. Um, but on top of the temperatures, we're also seeing a change in atmospheric circulation. This is believed to be caused by melting ice in the Arctic Sea. Analysis so that the typical summer circulation passes uh, eastwards over Europe, including the jet stream, but right now it's slowing down because of this melting ice. What it means is that we've got a build-up of hot and dry conditions that are lingering over Europe. So what might have been in the past just a few pleasant summery days are now turning into potentially dangerous heat waves. And certainly as an Australian living in Paris, I can attest to the fact in the last 10 years since I've been here, it's the, each summer seems to be getting warmer. You're right. But how frequent are these events going to become, given what you've just been saying? The, the simple answer is they're going to become a lot more frequent. Fra Meteo France says that the frequency could double by 2050 if we don't take drastic action to cut our carbon emissions. They've given a specific number. Heatwave days in France could increase from five per summer, which we're seeing at the moment, five seems like a lot, to 25 per 25. summer. 25. And the thing is, is you could say that we're actually already seeing it. July and August are typically the hot months here in Paris, not June. And we're seeing a potential heat wave, or we're seeing it's on the cards right now. The last one was in 2005, but that is the only one we've seen since 1947. Not only that, the one that's happening right now is predicted and most likely to be much more intense. So, in fact, unprecedented in June, and we will be setting yet another record in it. And a report by a UN expert today talks of the risks of climate apartheid. What does uh, he or she mean by that? Yeah, this is a term that has prop, uh, cropped up uh, several times in the past few years. Today, in this report by UN Special Rapporteur Philip Alston, to put it simply, the idea is that the rich are better equipped to deal with this hotter climate, uh, leaving the rest of the world to suffer. Uh, on a very micro level, we could say that we're seeing it right now, the, the difference, the contrast between people who have the luxury of air conditioning and those who do not have the, the pleasure of staying cool here in Europe. The report does go much further than that, though. It talks about undoing the work that we've done in a poverty reduction over the 50, last 50 years if we don't act on the climate. Um, the injustice, of course, amplified by the fact that the poor have contributed very little to global warming, and yet they're going to bear the brunt of it, and they're the least equipped to deal with its consequences. All right, Dundas, uh, thanks.